Spirit of Christ. And I say to you in the name of Jesus and in that spirit, you are the most valuable member. And God, you're so, you're so valuable, God said he would give his best gift for you. Never, never let anyone diminish your value. Ever. Amen. Amen. So we honor you today in the spirit of Christ, my lovely wife, my daughters. We praise God for them. My daughter-in-law, my grandpa, my boy. No, no, my other boy. Oh, Josiah down there. Okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for all of you today. Uh, thank God for that prayer. That prayer was my heart being expressed. And, and then Sister Puddy, she, she, I think Esther stirred her up because Sister Puddy just never took over. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to talk, as you see the subject, my nourishment. Pastor Carter asked me a question. Uh, she said, Apostle. And she talked to me until I have a daddy. I'm a daddy. Physically, I don't know I'm not, but she, she has embraced that spiritual father. Amen. She said, Boss, do you ever get tired? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, yeah, when? <laughs> she, said, she said, when? <laughs> and she, she sent me something this morning. She said, I don't feel like I've been wrong about Mac truck. <laughs> and you up early in the morning, you text and talk about how blessed God is. <laughs> and, and so I do get tired. <clears throat> I get frustrated. I encounter reservations like all of you. <laughs> but what drives me past it? Is what I'm going to talk to you about. I'm going to start it this morning. My nourishment. Amen. Because I want you to understand what that means. Amen. Those are not my words. Those are the words of the Lord. Amen. And so I do get tired. Think about me when you think about how frustrated you get and how tired you get. And say, oh Lord, another Sunday. Another Wednesday. <laughs> and know that I go through it too. Come on, I'm, I'm just being honest with you. I go through the same things. Jesus went through the same things. And so this is why I make this message so personal. Amen? Go with me this morning into the word of the Lord. John chapter 4. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I want to depict the scene for you before I start reading. We find that in John chapter 4, the beginning of that chapter, down to verse 31, Jesus had a conversation with the Samaritan woman. Uh -huh. he, was, he was at the well waiting on him. He knew exactly who she was. Come on, he knew her lifestyle. How many know what her lifestyle was? It was corrupt. I, I'm just late. Corrupt lifestyle. But yet, Jesus went to wait on her. And yet we don't have the same patience to wait for other corrupt people. Y'all better give me this one. You know, we, if, if they agitate us, we don't want too much to do with them. You know, if they got habits, we don't want to to get in their presence because we don't want them to get us dirty. Yeah. Come on, you ever felt like that? I know I have. I, I felt like, man, my God, 
up when they're drinking and smoking. Man, don't get that stink on them. Amen. Okay, I'm going to be free with you this morning. I, I want to free you from religion. I, I've been like that. And, and here, here, was, here was a person whose body may have indicated some filthiness and all of those things. But what was lost was the soul. Yeah. It was corrupt and it was in darkness. And yet, the Lord took time to go to the very place she would come. want to go to that well and meet her. Because he wanted to go into Samaria. Oh, y'all, come on. He said, I want to go somewhere, but I need a vessel to take me there. And he waited on a corrupt He didn't call a preacher. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't call the song leader. He didn't wait on them. He waited yeah. on this corrupt woman. Oh, come on, say it again, Rapha. She had purpose that she didn't even know about. God had chosen her and then to carry his message into Samaria. She didn't go to seminary. She just had an encounter with Jesus. And he speaks to her while sitting on Jacob's well. And she said, why do you communicate with me? Knowing that I, I'm a Samaritan woman and the Jews have no dealings with us. He says, woman, if you knew who it was, <laughs> if you knew who was sitting on this well and who it was asking you to drink, you would have asked of him. And he would have given you living water. She said, wait a minute, my father Jacob drew from this well. Are you greater than him? She had her mentality wrapped around natural water. And the Lord was offering her something greater. When she encountered Jesus, she encountered her purpose. Now listen now. She had her mind wrapped around natural water. She left there without it. Come on, you, you, you may come to Jesus for one thing, but when he deals with you and you have a true encounter, you're going to leave with his purpose. Forget whatever you came there with or for, you'll leave with a burning desire to accomplish his purpose. And the Bible says she left her water pot. <laughs> Come on, y'all with me this morning. When will you and I leave our water pot in place for that which Jesus has to offer? <laughs> and her purpose was, again, why did Jesus sit there? He waited on her because he wanted him to go into Samaria. <laughs> She had no life. But she was chosen. And guess what she did? She went into Samaria and said, Come see a man. Come on. She didn't say, Come see a man that could preach with you. Oh, y'all, shut up. Come see a man that can. And that's a outstanding orator. His messages are so powerful. He he can preach. She can never say it again. She said, Come see a man that told me all that I've done. 
Amen. Well, y'all better get rid of it. If, you, if, if you're just looking for good messages and you're looking for things that tickle your fancy, y'all hear me now. You go, go listen to somebody else. But God's message is to tell you what you done, not for condemnation, so that but so that He get corrected. So that's the backdrop. He had this encounter. She had an encounter with him and fulfilled purpose. And the Bible says, as you well know, the whole city came back. The whole city. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Through what was a corrupt person who were willing to hear his message about herself, not someone else. She heard the message concerning her own life. And she carried it. The whole city comes back and listens to it and says to the woman, Now we believe not just for what you said, but we've heard it for ourselves. You may have bought a water pot today for something. But when you have an encounter with the Lord, He will feel the real need. And you'll leave that water pot. You'll realize that that was not what you needed at all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, I said I want to get to this message. Verse 31. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed and said, Master, eat. She came with natural water on her mind. They came with natural food. Come on, they're both over in there. They said, eat. Next verse. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you have no clue about. I mean, that was his words. <laughs> now, I paraphrase a little bit, but he said, You don't know, not, you know, not of, you have no idea what meat I eat. So, and I, what am I saying? When, 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 when Pastor Carter said, the yeah, you tired. Yes, but there's something about his purpose that will elevate you above the tiredness in your body. That will elevate you above the tiredness in your mind. Whenever you hear purpose in you, it will elevate. When you just told yourself, I'm not going to assemble, I'm tired. When you hear purpose, it will elevate. Yes, yeah. It didn't, doesn't mean that you didn't, wasn't tired. Right. <laughs> but that which was greater, yeah. come on, say it with me now, that which was greater elevated you above that tiredness. Yeah. What I mean by that, right now, you and I are experiencing gravity. How many believe and understand what gravity is? Come on. Right now, each and every one of us are experiencing gravity. That's right. But what has elevated us above gravity is called the law of lift. The law of lift will always elevate you above gravity. This is what keeps you and I right here standing, moving around. Not being totally pulled down. Why? Because the law of lift elevates you. In any aeronautic, they'll tell you the law of lift elevates the plane. It doesn't mean that gravity is not pulling on it. It's pulling on it because it's a constant. But the law of lift will always supersede it. The purpose of God will always supersede the natural. 
He will always elevate. So he says, the next verse, Therefore said the disciples one to another, Have any man brought him up to eat? Who gave him that bone? <laughs> what him some chip the day? Somebody done put him something. Why would they think that? Because physically he had been out there and they figured he should have been tired. He should have been oh come on, saints of God. There's some talk that no, you've been out there, they know you've been tried, and they can't seem to embrace or wrap their minds around why you're still standing. Why are you still able to carry on? Because you have meat to eat that they know not of. That drives you when nothing else will. Hallelujah. Then verse 34. That's where I want to get to. I promise you, I'm not going to try to preach it all in one second. But listen to this. Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will. Now hear me. Underline that word will and put pleasure there. Because that's what it means. He said, my meat or my nourishment. And we're going to talk about what that means. My nourishment is to do his pleasure. Y'all got to catch that. My nourishment is to do his pleasure. What does that mean? Let, if I could use a husband and wife example. And I can think of no greater one than my wife. Her desire, y'all have heard me say this before, so it's not strange, is to elevate everyone in the house above her own self. I've witnessed this from day one. That's her nature. So much so I have to try to get ahead of it to keep her from doing that sometimes. But she, she's so willing to give herself away for the pleasure of the family. Because her mindset is always, that's what they like. That's what he likes. That's what the children like. And I'll sit there and say, Lord, she constantly gives herself away for the pleasure of someone else. And I'll, and, and I'll cut it off. No, hold on a minute. Let's, let's, let's not do that now. Think about you. But I share that because this is literally what the Lord is communicating. He says, yeah, I have a desire. But there's something that trumps mine. Amen. And that is knowing what my father has pleasure in. Yes. Knowing what he enjoys. That's where he says I'm driven. That once I know what he wants, it will push me even beyond the tiredness of my body. The, the tiredness and fatigue of my mind. It will push Come y'all remember him in the garden, don't you? When his body was tired and beaten and bruised, and he was he was sweating, the Bible says, as great drops of blood. That means his hairline and all that stuff was cracking, and he was still driven. Even when his Bible said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. But oh, hallelujah, even while he was feeling that way in his flesh, the Spirit of God, and knowing what the will and pleasure of his father was, he said, yet not what I will. Oh, but Lord, what your pleasure is, let your pleasure be done in me. That's what, it, that's what he's communicating. 
He said, listen, to do the will of him that sent me. And to listen what he says here, to finish. Did he say finish his own work? No. No, no. He is good. Okay, no, please embrace this. When did God's work begin? Because he said, I'm here to finish it. I'm going to leave that thought with you. When then did God's work begin? Because he says, I'm sent to not start it, but to finish it. I'm here to finish it. Let me, let me remove the suspense. It started when God said, let there be light. God started a work. Y'all come on, stand with me. He started a work and then he brought man, amen. He brought man forth because he said, I need a visible representation. And so he placed man. Let me back it up. I'm going to try to finish. I'm going to try to wrap this up. Listen. The Bible says he brought man forth before man could ever be seen. He created man in the spirit. So man existed long before he ever showed up in the garden. Come on, you, you read that yourself. You'll see that God brought man forth. He brought you forth before you ever showed up in your mother's womb. He created you from the beginning. And then the Bible says, huh? Yes, sir. Then the Bible says, he formed it. He created him, but then he prepared him a body. He formed him a body. So he started his work a long time ago. Jesus said, I'm getting finished. I'm here to put a cap on it. Because it was the Father's desire that man always live with him. But live on the earth with physical form where he can be seen. And that, listen now, that work was interrupted when Adam yielded to the temptation. You notice I didn't say Eden. Adam was given the authority. God said, Adam, I give you the authority over everything. He communicated what God had given him to Eve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Eve certainly was deceived, but so was entire creation deceived by Adam. Because Adam went into it with his eyes wide open. Come on, man. Come on, he knew what God told him. So that's when the work started, and that put in motion this moment that we're talking about today in John chapter 4. He said, I come to finish God's work. So the disciples, along with the Samaritan woman, had their mind on natural things. Talking about literal water and literal food. Well, listen to listen to verse 34 in the Amplified Version. Jesus said to them, my food or my nourishment is to do the will or the pleasure of him who sent me and to accomplish and to completely finish his work. That's why I'm here. So I want to give you the definition of nourishment. I'm going to try to close this. The word nourishment has defined. Listen to this. 
the food or other substances necessary for growth, for health, and for good condition. Now this is a natural definition that I thought was really fitting. The first thing it says that nourishment is good for is for growth. What God wants to do in each of us is to grow us. That's the first thing that nourishment provides is the ability to grow. And then he talks about health. As you grow, do you realize that if you don't grow, you're not healthy? Y'all know what I'm saying? Let me give you the next term. If a baby is born, even at the proper season, if the baby does not grow, it won't be healthy. Amen. Growth is a covenant to health. Mm -hmm. And so spiritually, if you don't grow, you're not healthy. Mm -hmm. And if you're not healthy, you ain't in a good condition to do anything. You're not in position to do anything at all. So Jesus says, my nourishment, or what I need to grow, what I need to be in good health, what I need to be in good condition is his pleasure. Think about what I just said. He said, all of these things that give me growth and health is doing his pleasure. That's where my meal is. That's where my fuel is. When I can do his pleasure. That's why I showed you from the beginning five pillars. See, what fuels you? What drives you to grow? To be in good health and good condition. What ministry is in you that you would do if people never say anything about you at all? Because every one of us has something that God put there. My meat, he says, my nourishment is to do his pleasure and to finish what he started. What fuels you, beloved? What fuels you to say where well, you will do it when you're tired and when you're frustrated? All of those things that you could be sitting right there about ready to pass out and snoring. But when somebody mentioned the will of God, hurt you. Hey, what were you doing? Oh, no. <laughs> and you know you're tired. The wife might look at your husband and like, you still at your time? Yeah. But my meat yes. is to do his pleasure. Amen. Come on, stand to me. The ministry of the Lord drives me. My body says no. We are of God it pushes me beyond my boundary limits. And it excites me. Because I want to please him. His pleasure is what's on my mind more so today. You know, it's funny, time would do something to you. Yes, God <laughs> it would. It would bring a certain perspective ah. on things that you didn't have before. And I'm not here wanting you to think about where you've been. 
Think about where he wants you to go. Amen. Because where you've been will, will be used as one of those elements of growth mm -hmm. to help you do the job better now. Amen. For him. And it should give you excitement every time you're doing something for him. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you today. Thank you. For your word. Your word provides us length of days, yeah. long life, yeah. health, and peace. May we each understand that one thing that drives us. It will drive us beyond our limitations to do your pleasure. May each of us recognize it and act on it. Father, we'll never give you praise, honor, and glory. May we be like Jesus to finish what you have begun. That you placed in our hand. In Jesus' name. Amen.